It seems like an insult to our scientific capabilities that there are still areas around the universe that we have no idea about. Surely space is one place we have the least knowledge about. Absolutely not. The deepest part of the ocean is less visited than space. I know what you're thinking. Take a dive, scientists. Find out what water has buried since the start. But once we tell you these insane facts about the deepest part of the ocean, called the Hadal Zone of the ocean, it will become alarmingly clear exactly how deep and dangerous this entire entity is. If we're scaring you already, comment down below. Let's start with what exactly is the Hadal Zone of the ocean. And let us tell you, its name is truly fitting. This region is made of huge sunken areas called the Hadopelagic Zone. And these trenches are not called the Hadopelagic Zone for nothing. It's of course named after Hades, the Lord of the Underworld. And we just know Percy Jackson fans are getting excited and the weak-hearted are a bit anxious. The logic behind the name is that creatures and even people can enter the Underworld, but leaving is almost impossible. Basically, these watery depths have creatures that are super adapted to face the pressure and the never-ending dark holes of this zone. But there is a catch. Their extreme adaptations make it so they cannot live anywhere but the very weird Hadal Zone. Now you get the name. But you know, how deep is this crazy place? We're excited to tell you that it is 8,000 meters deep. As we mentioned, the ocean is made up of huge holes. The Hadal Zone of the ocean is basically made of very disjointed trenches, including the 26 in the Pacific. The total tally comes up to 33 trenches in the whole world. Some facts that will blow your mind. About its general size includes the Hadal Zone accounts for about 0.2% of the entire sea floor, but holds a whopping 45% of the depth. Yeah, it's super deep. But let's make it clearer for you with a very popular example. The Hadal Zone is so deep that you could fit Mount Everest inside the Marina Trench and still have more than a mile left over for you to swim about. The whole zone varies greatly, so it really should come as no surprise that this area has not received enthusiastic divers. Not even crazy scientists, which is really unfortunate. What a soft generation this is. In our days, we used to get excited over getting absolutely decimated by waves and die in a gruesome, unimaginable death. But then, how do we know how deep it is? Staying true to our humanity, we explode stuff to find out. TNT explosives are thrown into the trench and the echoes produced are recorded to measure the height. Yep, just throw bombs in the ocean and hope everything will be all right. Wait, wait, why did we say anyone who dived down there would die an unimaginable death? We can find that out by taking into account the features of the creatures who live down there. And they're crazy enough that we model alien predictions after them. The Hadal Zone is not entirely unexplored, of course. Some creatures have been extracted from shallow depths of the trenches, like the weird worm-like pyrococcus. These insects are what you call extremophiles. Finally, a scientific word that makes sense. Basically, they are in the same category as aliens because they survive in very extreme conditions. Life outside of Earth survives under extreme temperatures, pressures, and light intensity. Also, so aliens' adaptations can be kind of predicted by studying extremophiles that live in the Hadal Zone. It is also pretty much freezing down there, around 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, which is 33.8 Fahrenheit, for everyone who still refuses to use the metric system. We're looking at you, three countries out of hundreds, get on the bandwagon. Okay, it may seem like a summer day to you all, Canadians and Greenlanders, however, keep in mind that most water creatures survive at a higher temperature and they do not have complicated thermoregulation mechanisms like us, or even central heating. And the pressure in the Hadal Zone is seriously messed up. It varies between 600 to 1100 atmospheres, which is exactly like placing an object weighing one ton on your finger. Now, unless you are Captain America, or even if you are him, your finger will explode if we put a polar bear on it. Actually, it will break, but exploding gets our point across. Unfortunately, contrary to popular belief, there are zero mysterious monsters down there. Probably. Mostly there are super tiny creatures, like microworms. But how does a tiny 0.67 inches of creature survive these pressures? That's what is so important to science. We basically have an alien-like specimen in our backyard. 
you know, a backyard that's more than 8,000 meters deep. Scientists can study the adaptations of these creatures and calibrate them to different environments in space. And voila, you have a model of a specimen that could maybe exist somewhere in space, like on another planet. The question that is formed is, how did we come about doing this meager exploration? At this point in time, when we realized the huge mystery that is the ocean, we still did not know exactly the kind of creatures that could survive six kilometers underwater. The first expedition to finally discover what is even in these depths was the HMS Challenger expedition. This was the beginning of this exciting journey, and we allowed the scientists who were brave enough to challenge themselves. From 1873 to 1876, these courageous explorers managed to bring up samples from around eight kilometers. But there's always a catch, and the catch was that this find could be from shallow fish that had ventured at eight kilometers and then died. All the experiments shattered here. Don't worry, our story continues. But in 1901, the Princess Alice expedition found creatures from below six kilometers. And the first picture ever taken of this area was by Jacques Cousteau. If that sounds familiar, it's because either you are a boomer or you vaguely remember Phoebe from Friends screaming, I love Jacques Cousteau, like us. There's also the distinct possibility that you are way more knowledgeable than us, but we'll ignore that option. Getting back on track, Cousteau was the first one to ever take a picture of these zones in 1956. This was the picture of the Romanche Trench in the Atlantic. So truly, this part was actually seen by the world because of friends. We're not sorry about this. By now, we have shared the unimaginable natural horrors of the Hadal Zone. But as always, the real horror is humanity, and the real danger is posed by us as well. Since mankind is not satisfied to leave any part of the world untouched by our garbage greed, even the trenches of the Hadal Zone were used as a dumping site. Yeah, we truly spare no one. In the 1970s, pharmaceutical companies thought, wow, we really are annihilating the world. But what haven't we rendered useless yet? And it immediately clicked. We spared King Hades and Kingdom. They dumped, literally, 880 Boeing 747s worth of waste in the Puerto Rico trench. That's incomprehensible. Although, it is not really inconsiderate. Since it is not possible to clean the ocean so deep, we don't need to worry about it. We can ignore it. And while it won't go away, we don't have to have a guilty conscience. Voila! No one likes all these amphipods that live down there anyway. They are very ugly. Oh, and there's an RTG containing 3.9 kilograms of extremely radioactive material in the Tonga Trench. This might give cancer to every creature down there. In case you wanted to be the first dive in there after you got inspired from this video. Before we get angry at the never-ending tragedies posed by humans, let's get back to some great facts about the deepest part of the ocean. When it moves, it causes time to shift. This line does not seem like a cheesy dance song comment, but when you apply it to the Java Trench, not so much. It's in fact slightly disturbing how the Sumatra Andaman earthquake of 2004 released so much energy it caused the Earth's rotation to shorten by 2.68 microseconds. Another movement in these trenches caused the rotation to shorten by 1.8 microseconds. This also sounds like something out of a fantasy novel, and we don't exactly know its consequences. Do you agree that the Hadal Zone is truly terrifying? Or you are surprised that people actually fear watery graves? Let us know in the comments below, and we will pin the best one. Make sure you like this video and share it with your friends and family. Then argue with whoever claims that the Hadal Zone is not absolutely terrifying. Subscribe for more videos that will explore the craziest part of the universe and give you existential crisis attacks. It's all part of our charm. We will catch you next time on the new wacky episode of Big Facts. Until then, have a great day. If you decide to dive in the Hadal Zone, tag us in the pictures. Let's see if you dive from the pressure the temperature, or the cancer.